are such a blessed church. They have a music ministry such as we have right here. They have truly, truly blessed our hearts on today. And this has been a wonderful service. Have you been blessed today? God has showed out and showed up. So we're very grateful for all that the Lord has done. Allow me to take this time out to thank God for our senior pastor for this moment that he has given me. He could have got anybody to preach, but he did ask if I will share, and I'm very grateful. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Amen. I also like to recognize the leadership of the church. I thank God for all of our pastors, our ministers, our deacon, deaconess, and all of the leaders of the church. It takes a multitude of people to run a ministry such as this. And so would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the leadership? God, thank you for all that you do for this minute and for the kingdom of God. Amen. With that being said, would you turn with me to the book of John, chapter 11, verse 1 through 6 and 11 through 15. We'll be dealing with the entire chapter, but I just want to read a portion of the scripture that is the book of John, chapter 11, verse 1 through 6, and 15, 11 through 15. Now, my word may le read just a little bit different than yours. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. For the word reads, starting at verse 1 in John 11, a man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sister, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped it with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for two more days. Look at verse 11. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him. The disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. But Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad about it. I wasn't there for now you will really believe, come, let's go see him. Amen. Gracious Father, I humble myself before you for this opportunity that you have extended to me to share your word. I pray, God, that you use me as a willing vessel I recognize all of my shortcomings, but I know that you can. So, God, I pray that you use me to be a blessing to the body of Christ and all of those who are tuned in. Touch the ear of the listeners that they may receive what you have given me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and thank God. Franklin, for the next few moments, I'd like to share with you from the topic, He's Able. He's Able. John is the author of the text. He wants us to know what type of relationship Lazarus and his sisters had with Jesus in the beginning of the text. On one occasion, Mary poured nard on Jesus' feet and wiped it with her hair. Nard was an expensive perfume valued at 300 denarii equivalent to a year's salary back in biblical days. Today value about 54500 in U.S. dollars. That was some expensive perfume. 
The Bible says Lazarus was sick. This was more than a common cold, but a serious illness. In verse 3, the sister sent an emergency email, Instagram, Twitter message to Jesus. The one you love, your dear friend, is sick. In verse 5, the Bible says Jesus loved Lazarus and his sisters, which tell us they had a close personal relationship with Jesus. On another occasion, in the book of Luke chapter 10, Jesus came over for dinner. Mary and Martha was preparing a scrumptious meal. They had mustard greens, fried chicken, the gospel bird, dirty rice, jiffy cornbread, candy yams, potato salad, and sweet tin, sweet tea. A meal fit for a king. They were about to throw down. When Jesus arrived, Mary left the kitchen and sat at Jesus' feet listening to him speak. Martha got upset with Mary, leaving her slaving in the kitchen by herself. So she complained to Jesus, Lord, tell Mary to finish helping me in the kitchen. Jesus told Martha, Martha have, Mary has chosen the right thing to hear the word and it will not be taken from her. Which tells us how important it is to spend time with Jesus in the word. To learn, grow, build a closer relationship so we can become more like him. The text is telling us church members is good. We should attend church and worship God, but God also desire a closer walk with him. We must make the word a priority in our lives. Most of us eat physical food three times a day and snacks in between. How much more we must feast on spiritual food daily. It can be just it can't be just on Sundays and Wednesdays. Some of us are undernourished spiritually and Satan is having a field day in our lives. When Jesus was in the wilderness hungry and Satan attacked him at a weak moment, each time he responded, he responded with the word. He said, and it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Growing in the word is important. During difficult, challenging, overwhelming moments in life, we must stand on the word of God. It's the word that strengthens. It's the word that encourages. It's the word that reinsures. It's the word that consoles. It's the word that brings life. It's the word that comforts us. The word says in Matthew 24 and 35, heaven and earth will pass, but my word will last forever. The word says in Psalms 30 and 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The word says in Psalms 55 and 20, to a cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. The word says in Isaiah 26 and 3, thou will keep him in perfect peace who mind is stayed on him. We must trust in the word of God. <laughs> Having a close personal relationship with Jesus did not exempt Lazarus from getting sick. Which tells us being saved doesn't exempt us from heartache and pain, stress and strain, trials and tribulation, and the troubles of this world. We will still go through struggles and problems on this earth, but we have someone we can call on, count on, lean on, and depend on in our times of need. His name is Jesus because he's able. The word says in John 16 and 33, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have problems, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. As children of God, 
we must understand no matter how difficult, challenging, burdensome, painful life becomes, the God we serve is able to help us through our struggles. What's puzzling to me, in verse 4a, Jesus said this sickness will not end in death, then Lazarus died. This is not the best translation of the text. In the original Hebrew language says, the final result of the sickness will not end in death. The text is saying Lazarus, the text doesn't say Lazarus won't die, meaning ultimately Lazarus will live. Finally, Jesus showed up four days late. G Lazarus now has been dead for four days. Jesus missed the funeral service, the burial service, and the repast. When the sisters got word that Jesus finally made it into town, Mary stayed home. She was distraught and frustrated. But Martha went to meet Jesus. Don't miss this. Sister girl had an attitude. I didn't say attitude. She had an attitude. In the text, listen to the tone of the text. If you would have been here, my brother would have not died. Yeah. I don't believe she meant it that way. She had to have been a sister. I believe she was a sister. Yeah. You see, I can see her now with her hands on her hip, rolling her neck. Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would have not died. She had attitude. Oh, yeah. Janelle's interpretation if you would have came when we first sent for you, Jesus, my brother would have not died, Jesus. My brother would have not died. Now you show sure four days later when everything is over, Jesus, she has some attitude. Then Mary showed up with attitude. If you would have been here, Jesus, our brother would have not died. Jonelle's interpretation. What took you so long to get here, Jesus? There's some attitude going on. From a chronological standpoint, it took the messenger one day to travel from Bethany to where Jesus was located. Jesus stayed where he was for two days. It took Jesus one day to travel to Bethany, which equals four days. Some folks say that Jesus was in Jerusalem, which is only a couple of hours away. But the text does not say that. Because it means that when the messenger left Bethany, that Lazarus had already died. So that whole day in traveling, Lazarus was dead. So that's how we end up with four days Jesus stayed and finally arrived in Bethany. Can you imagine how these sisters felt praying, seeking Jesus' help, and heard nothing? Is there anyone in this place can relate? You are struggling, going through a difficult moment in your life. You cry out to Jesus on your knees, seeking his face, pleading your case, and heard absolutely nothing. Is there anyone in the house can relate to what I'm talking about. Not a word. The question is why, Lord, why? The first point I want to share with you, for God's glory. For God's glory. In John 11, 4b, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. So that the Son of God will receive glory from this. God allowed Lazarus to die knowing his ultimate plan for him to live again that he may be glorified. In verses 14 and 11, Jesus said plainly, Lazarus is dead and I'm glad about it. The culture 
in that day believe when a person died, their spirit hovered over their body for three days, trying to re-enter. After three days, the spirit left, and there was no hope that person would live again. Jesus knew the culture belief in that day. So he stayed away for four days before he showed up. God had a plan. If Lazarus would have lived again after his death between one to three days, people of that day would have believed it was a natural course of action. His spirit finally re-entered the body and God would not have been glorified. So Jesus waited until four days to show up so when God works a miracle, no one will get the credit but God because God wants the glory. Sometimes God allows us to go through hardships to mature us in the faith. Move us from where we are spiritually to get us to where he wants us to be. Ultimately, God allow us to go through struggles in life because God wants glory from our life. The question is, what is glory? What is glory? Glory is putting God on display for everyone to see. Allow me to repeat that for you who online missed it. Glory is putting God on display for everyone to see. In 2009, the New Orleans Saints won the Super Bowl and received glory. A spotlight was put on the team. Everyone across the nation and other countries was talking about the New Orleans Saints. It was on every TV news station and radio station. Fans like myself had bragging rights. A parade was given in their honor, and throngs of people showed up cheering for their team. The team did something no other Saints team have ever done before. They made it to the Super Bowl and won. The team was put on display for the world to see. That is glory. There are times in our life our world has fallen apart. No matter what we do or who we call on, it's not working out. Our friends can't help us and land to land that high-paying job. Your child is disobedient and has gone astray no matter how much you talk to him or her. Dealing with health issues and the medicine is not working. Your attorney tells you your case don't look promising. Could it be if God would work out in your behalf at this moment that you would give the credit to those people you know instead of giving credit to God? So God allow us to go through some things sometime where we have done everything humanly possible, exhausted every resource. The timing is right for God when we understand that God is able to heal deliver, set us free, we will then know that nobody but did it but God, so God receive all of the glory. God wants glory, church, from our lives, from what we say, our conversation, how we live, our conduct, places we go, things we do, and even how we dress. We are representing God. How some people dress today should be left for the bedroom, not in the public. The word says in Proverbs 16 and 4, the Lord has made everything for his own purpose, for his glory. We need to understand it's not about me, it's not about you, but it's all about him. The reason we hear that God may receive glory from our lives The second point, believe in God. Believe in God. The text says in John 11, 23 through 25, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said he will rise again when everyone else rises. At the last day, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. 
anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Jesus understood that Martha was grieving over the death of her brother. She was in insurmountable pain. Jesus tried to comfort her by telling her, you will see your brother again. Martha said, I know I'll see him in the resurrection at the last day when everyone else will rise. We have to give Martha credit. She knew her Bible. Her theology was partially correct. She was so focused on what she saw her brother in the grave, she missed the point Jesus was making. Jesus reminded her, I am the resurrection and the life. Her circumstances did not dictate to Jesus, but she dictated to her, his, her circumstance because he is the great I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the vine. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. No, not that I'm going to be, but he is the great I am right now. We need to know that God is able. Between verses 25 through 27, Jesus used the word believe four times. He was not lost for words, but making a point. Stop looking at what we see but believe in God. Even debt has to obey God. When life becomes overbearing, our world has been turned upside down, and you don't know what to do from a humanistic standpoint because we th see things in the natural, especially when things are getting worse and not getting better. Always remember, God has our best interest at heart. We must believe in God. Jesus wants us to stop focusing on our condition, but focus on the one who can change our condition. God's timing may not be ours, but he's always on time. We must believe in God. Even when things appear not to be working out for our good, we must still believe in God. I used to work for Federal Express before the church brought me on full time. I worked inside of the office, kind of like the post office receiving packages. And while I was working one day, I looked on a computer system. They had a job posting. And when I look at the salary, it was a huge bump in pay. As a young family, I said, it's going to be a blessing to my family. So I applied for the job. I received a message back saying that, dear Mr. Thomas, we received your information about applying for this job. We would like to bring you to headquarters and interview you. So about a week later, well, I, I started asking people to pray for me because I wanted that job. So they... A week later, they sent me airline tickets. They flew me from New Orleans to Memphis, Tennessee. I don't know if you've ever been to FedEx Hub. It's a humongous place. I had a chance to take a Porsche tour of the Hub. Then they brought me and interviewed me. The interview in my mind went well. I was pleased. They appeared to be pleased. They treated me to lunch after. So I knew I had the job. When I got home, I started telling folk to pray for me. I got ugly with it. You know how we do when you want something. In the name of Jesus, I name it and claim it. I was claiming all kind of stuff because I wanted that job. About two weeks later, I received another letter. It says, Dear Mr. Thomas, we thank you for being interested in this position, but why you got to put a but in it? Everything was going fine before, but now you're going to say, but. But we found someone else we're going to hire, but we thank you for taking time out to apply for the position. So, sir, please continue to apply for other positions that may come available. 
I said, Lord, I believe in you. It happened for a reason. The next day I said, Lord, but why, Lord? Just tell me why. I don't understand, God. I want to know why. That went on for a week. One day, so Lord, I understand. The next day, I'm asking God, why you allowed this to happen? Flip-flopping back and forward. After a week, I went back to work, just trying to get my mind clear, doing the things I'm supposed to do. And then, three months later, the news hit. That department was closing down. Those people who was working that department have to find another job within the company or they was going to be laid off. Some of the people have to travel, transfer out to different cities. I said, Lord, thank you. I didn't get that job. I'm so grateful that you blessed me. I didn't get that job. I said, Lord, I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you. So I didn't get that job. But I was so grateful. So when things happen in my life and it's not working out the way I think it is, I'm believing in God. Because I know God has my best interest at heart. We need to know that God believes when we trust in him, believe in him, God going to work it out for our good. Noah believed in God when he and his family were saved from the flood. Moses believed in God and he parted the Red Sea. A widow believed in God and became debt free. Daniel believed in God and survived the lion's pit. The three Hebrew boys believed in God and survived a fiery furnace. A centurion soldier believed in God and his service was healed. Peter believed in God and walked on water. We need to know that we need to believe in God no matter how things look. Things may not look good. Things may look like it's falling apart. But we need to believe in God knowing that the God we serve is able some folks say that it's out of your lease. Some folks may tell you it's not going to work out. But who are you, you going to believe in? Believe in God because he's able this morning. God is able this morning. Third point, third point. The power of God. The power of God. In John 11, 39, 41a, and 43 through 44 a the word says roll the stone away roll the stone aside jesus told them but martha the dead man's sister protested lord he has been dead for four days they smell the smell will be terrible so they rolled the stone away then jesus shouted lazarus and the dead man came forth Lazarus had been dead for four days. His body started to decompose and had a strong odor. This was an impossible situation. They placed him in a cave, stone, and rolled a stone in front of the grave. Jesus could have healed Lazarus while he was still living, but he didn't. He waited until Lazarus had died. He wanted to demonstrate that God has power over death. Now everyone would see and hear about the power of God. He told them to roll away the stone, but Martha objected. Lord, he's been dead for four days. Stink it about now. Martha still did not fully understand the power of God. Nothing happened until she obeyed Jesus, which tell us we're praying about some things, but we're not listening to God telling us to do. And so finally, Martha got on board. They rolled away the stone. Jesus spoke to the dead man, saying, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came forth. He which is dead is not alive by the power of God. There may be some folks in here today dealing with a dead situation in your life. You have been struggling with it for years, an impossible situation that have you stressing and feeling hopeless. That same God 
that raised Lazarus from the dead is the same God that has power to deliver you and me from our crisis. When we are obedient to his word, then we can experience the power of God. True story, true story. There was a lady in Atlanta. She had three children. She was a shuttle driver for a hotel that she worked for. She would drive the customers from the hotel to the airport and from the airport to the hotel. When the pandemic hit, she was laid off. She had three children, didn't know anybody else in Atlanta. And so she got on the phone and called the unemployment office looking for financial help. But at that time, everybody was closed down. So she went online and filled out the application and sent it. A week later, she heard nothing. All the money she had now was drying up. And so she started calling at least 12 times a day, leaving messages, letting them know that she needs some employment. She said that she would go from church to church trying to receive food, food banks. But when she had no more gas, she could not get to the food bank or to the church. She was in bad shape. She said that it got so bad that she found herself feeding her kids because they only had a little left, and she went to bed hungry. She got on her knees that day, and she cried out to God, Lord, please help me. I don't know what else to do. She was struggling. The next day while she was out trying to find food for her family, they had a news team out. Out of the thousand of people in Atlanta, they happened to interview her. She told them what her struggle was. They listened carefully. They was able to get in contact with the unemployment office. The unemployment office checked out online that everything that they said was correct. They end up sending her three months of back pay so she can now feed her family. I just want you to know the power of God. It looked like an impossible situation, but we need to know that the God we serve is able this morning. God is able. He's able. One more point, then I'm going to take my seat. One more point. Just, just give me a minute. One more point. Number four, set free by God. Set free by God. In John chapter 11, verse 44, he that came forth bound hand and feet with grave clothes on, and his face bound with a napkin, Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. As Jesus stood in front of Lazarus' grave, he spoke, Lazarus, come forth. He who is dead is now alive, but bound with dead men clothes. He's unable to move and function because he has dead men clothes on. In Bible days, when a person died, their body was prepared for burial. Their body was washed and anointed with expensive perfume like Nord, Myrrh, or Alloys. Then the body was wrapped in shroud, a linen garment. The face was covered with a special cloth, and the hands and feet tied with strips of cloth, looking like a mummy. Lazarus is alive but restricted because he has dead men clothes on. He's been set free but constrained because of dead men's clothes. Jesus told them to loose him. He's now been set free. We also were dead. When we were in the world and of the world, not having a relationship with Jesus, we was dead in our sins. But when we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, God delivered us from death. Now we're alive. But some of us have dead men clothes on. We are saved but still living for the world. That's dead men clothes. 
When the world is a priority in our lives over God, that's dead man clothes. Dead man clothes restricts us from being free. We are confined, enslaved to the things of the world. Dead man clothes keep us bound, constrained, not having freedom in Christ. On our way to heaven, but not reaching our full potential. Limited in our ability, robbing us of our freedom. The word says in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, to keep us bound in dead men clothes. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God wants us to be set free from dead men clothes. Dead men clothes start to fall off when we are when we are no longer bound but set free by God because he's able this morning. He's able to set us free. Jesus came through 42 generations. He turned water into wine because he's able. Gave sight to the blind, caused the mute to speak because he's able. Caused the deaf to hear and the lame to walk because he's able. He walked on water and healed ten lepers because he's able. Healed an invalid at the pool of Bethesda, fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread because he's able. Healed Peter's mother-in-law and healed the woman with an issue of blood of 12 years because he's able. I don't know what your struggles are or the pain you are in, but I do know he's able this morning. He's able to meet our needs. He will deliver us from it or give us strength to go through it because he's able. Is there anybody in this place can testify today that the God we serve is able? We need to know that Satan has power, but God has all power because he's able. He's able to work it out in your life. He's able to work it out in your life. He's able to work it out in your life and my life. We need to know no matter what folks says, no matter how bad things look, no matter what the job says, the God we serve is able this morning. He's able this morning. He's able this morning. God is able to work it out. God is able. God is able. Gracious Father, thank you, Lord. It's my prayer that you would touch your people's heart and allow us to realize to stop looking at our circumstances and start looking at you and let us know, God, that you're able. Please, Father, help us. I pray for the saints right now that you would draw us closer to you. I pray for those who don't know you that you will convict their hearts that they may accept you as Lord and Savior. And those who are going through trials and tribulation right now, please, God, strengthen them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. God bless you on this morning.